therapy. Sometimes I feel like every pass I throw is just an act of aggression towards my father. You know, who I could never truly respected me as a man, nor did he give me the love that I deserve. Man, that's some hairy stuff. Thank you, sir. At least you knew your father, man. Never met mine. Sometimes we can't see the light through the long shadows that our fathers can. But stay focused and we'll be okay. Great! They forgot to call a play, though. <laughs> uh, the adventure game Skyrim was such a huge, massive hit, it made us have created a sequel set in the world of a popular in-flight catalog. Get ready to enter the epic realm of Skymall. Let's do some shopping. That's good. And that was All right, touch the sensor toilet seat. fighting game that clearly has an underlying storyline between its contestants, the UFC sexual tension. Jonathan, David, uh, Joseph, Thomas, William, 
the name, so it's, uh, it's easy to... I almost forgot the last one. <laughs> My daughter Allie will be a token, because I have a, a, a good catch on that, by the way. Very good catch. Um, all right, my first question is, you are all grown men, you all have, uh, you're, you're married, you have children. Does it bother you that the press always calls you the Romney boy? <laughs> it's like you're 98 degrees or something. Yeah. 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 We were we're thinking about there were boys in yeah. a mall. I mean, yeah. uh, you're... We prefer brothers, but, you know, some people call us boys, so whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like in a Western, you would be, you know, the, the posse. Get them Romney boys in here! <laughs> um... It seems odd that you're, okay, your parents have, uh, uh, all of you guys, all boys, all boys. So my question is, is one of you a girl being raised as a boy? <laughs> Jane, you want to take this one? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Ben, yeah. Ben, sold out immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Very attractive, Ben. Uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the purple tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, we have... This uh, seems like a large family to me, uh, but this is just a uh, tip of the iceberg. We have a photo here of a family gathering of the Romneys. Uh, absolutely incredible. You can tell when you guys get together, there's a global khaki shortage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a panic worldwide. But I love that you're all dressed the same, but you can tell Ben is the rebel in stripes. Check that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It takes a lot of guts to say I'm going stripes when everyone else is glad. Yeah. Mix it up. Um, all right, now this is serious business. Your dad is running uh, the presidency of the United States of America, and people are trying to get to know him. And uh, there is, you know, all kinds of like, what kind of guy is he? And trying to understand who he is, I thought you guys could tell us, who is this Mitt Romney? What's he all about? First of all, you claim that he likes pranks. He does like pranks. Oh, he doesn't like to get pranks. Uh, and, uh, we no learned, one does like to we, get pranks. We learned that the hard way. <laughs> We've learned that the hard way. I know uh, we, had, we had one of those basements at our house, one of those scary, you know, old New England basements, as you probably grew up with. And uh, you had to walk in like three or four steps into the basement to turn the light, you know, pull the light switch down. So I heard my dad coming down the stairs. And uh, I turned the light off and hid back there. So I saw him walk in the room trying to... How long ago was this, by the way? This was, uh, this was a while ago. Okay, good. Ready. So we didn't have Secret Service protection. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really stupid <laughs> idea. <laughs> so I, uh, as he's looking for the light, I grabbed his, his arm. In the dark. Scream in the dark. And it, it terrified him. Did he and shriek? Did he scream? He shrieked a bit. Yeah, a little shriek. A little shriek. So he, he, he turned that shriek. <laughs> <laughs> he, he turns the lights on and looks at me and just tackles me to the ground and says, you know, and he's wrestling me to the ground and he goes, was it worth it? And I'm not going to do And that just made it that much funnier. And so I'm like, yeah, still worth it, Dad. He keeps wrestling me, still worth it? Yeah, still worth it, Dad. That's a very frightening prank to jump out at your father yeah. in the dark. He didn't like it. He didn't like no, it. No, he didn't like it. What, what pranks, did, does he like to play pranks? And if so, what kind of prank does he like to play? Yeah, he likes to play a lot of pranks. Uh, yeah, I remember a story from when he was uh, in high school, or uh, I guess it's a little after high school, and his friend was getting married, and he found his way into the hotel room ahead of time, and all the, his, the groom that was there, he took some uh, pink uh, nail polish and wrote on the, on the first shoe, H-E, and the, on the sole, and the next one, L-P, and no one noticed it, but then when he, it was a Catholic wedding, and when he knelt down to be blessed by the Father, the word help appeared. <laughs> Very good prank. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure they're still friends. But, uh. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, the wife wouldn't think that was funny. Uh, okay, I'm curious. Did you, I've, I've heard a rumor that your dad likes to get people to try and smell things. Yeah. And then, uh, what does he do? He, 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 this is a fairly common prank. We always fall for it. I don't know why we always well, fall for it. Well, tell us, Matt. What does he do? So it's, it's fun and it's turned. It's so rotten. you got to smell it. It's like, oh, yeah, of course. We have to smell it right away. And you go down and... Right into the butter. Or the whipped cream, you, you're, you're ending up with stuff all over your face. Right? Wait a minute. Okay. So he's basically just smashing your faces into food all the day. <laughs> and now we do it to our kids, you know, naturally. <laughs> well, that's uh, as it should be. Uh, <laughs> proud Romney heritage, which must be passed down. Passing down. I just don't know. Is he going to be doing that kind of stuff as president? You know, if he was the president, yeah. would he be saying, like, oh, Mr. Bernanke, I'm worried about these figures. Mush! <laughs> Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know what we should do? We should take a, a quick break more uh, with uh, the Romney Boys when we come back to the ground. <laughs> this is 
the promo for the new comedy, Men at Work. But this isn't the set. But we can pretend it is. Like it. I'm leaning against the bar. I'm talking to two lovely ladies. Yeah? Well, I'm leaning against the bar. I'm talking to three lovely ladies. Well, I'm only talking to one lady, but she's the most beautiful woman in the entire bar. Dude, um, that's my mom. Yeah, it is. Oh, not again. Mom, Men at Work. A brand new episode, Thursday at 10, only on PBS. Very funny. We're back. I'm sitting here uh, with uh, Mitt Romney's five sons. And uh, just in case anyone's concerned we don't have enough, we do have three extra Romneys on backup that can be brought in at any time. <laughs> <laughs> the sweater vest is a nice touch. <laughs> yeah. That's Try, Lag, and Bernie right there. <laughs> Just making up names. Uh, one of you spotted them on the way. We just thought, we'll just have these guys. We can always bring them in if you need to. And one of you guys spotted them when you were in the green room and you said, we know exactly what that is. <laughs> Quite awkward. Uh, Matt, you were talking about Franks, and I want to make sure I get this. During the primaries, uh, your dad very interested in getting the endorsement of Governor Schwarzenegger, and you actually had a device, it's a box that gives you Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice, and you used it, Matt, to play a prank on, thank you. I looked at you, John. Uh, so look at the name tag. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, no, the other guy. No, the other guy. Uh, you used it to play a prank on your dad. It actually seems pretty mean, and we have uh, have the footage here. Let's take a look. Governor, Mitt Romney, how are you? Hi. How are you? I'm just fine, Governor. How are you doing today? Good. Good. What can I do for you? I'll ask you a bunch of questions. They want to have them answered immediately. Uh, go right ahead and shoot. Who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> Nothing pleasant the mind of a bad prank than biting into a giant sandwich. <laughs> Matt, was he irritated because he was uh, after that? For a few months I was fearing retribution, I really was, but he still hasn't gotten me. So thanks for the reminder though, thanks. That's <laughs> He'll come back. What can he do to you? Uh, to get to know more about your father, I prepared some true or false questions. Right. Can we have these? Mm -hmm. uh, true or false questions about your father. True or false, your dad can moonwalk. I, we yeah. heard that that's true, but we haven't seen it, so we can't tell you it. I've never witnessed that. Well, wait, because uh, you, who, people are telling you your dad can moonwalk. If someone told me my dad could moonwalk, I would find out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's over. I mean, he's got like turf toe or something or plantar, fa plantar fasciitis, so it's, it's no longer possible. So is he claiming that he once could? It's probably the claim. Okay, okay. You'll but no one's ever seen him. You'd like to get him on here and try it out, don't you think? I'd okay. Like get him on. True or false, your dad went to college on a croquet scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> <That's one. laughs> also new. Also, I find that out. also new. You need to tell people that's not true. Yeah. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, false. Can't name the truth. False. Okay, false. false. Very good. The campaign is what they <laughs> deny that. <laughs> true or false, your dad loves to sing. True. So, and Very what does he like to sing? Give me an example of a song he loves to sing. He likes to sing uh, whatever comes to his head. Uh, he likes Roy Orbison in particular, but uh, he'll sing whatever. You know, he had and a so Will Ferrell skit stuck in his head for about five years. There was a, you know, the Will Ferrell cheerleader skit. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So um, they had, they were at a swim meet and they, you know, were cheering for the swimmers and they, it was the taco burrito, something's coming out of your speedo. <laughs> and uh, he, anytime you mention that, would sing that? Anytime you mention that word, taco or burrito, you knew my dad would chime in. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and then immediately moonwalking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Backward. Okay. True or false, your dad's hair is chiseled out of imported African mahogany. <laughs> that is true. True. <laughs> uh, at home, this is a true or false question, at home, some of you like to call your dad the mister. False. Okay. I just tweet, I just... I call him that sometimes when I tweet about him. Okay. True or false, when your dad's feeling under the weather, you call Dell Tech Support. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to talk about that one. <laughs> he doesn't actually ever get there. Yeah. I do have a question for you, which is uh, kind of a serious question, which is uh, you, obviously all of you uh, believe that your dad 
would be a great president uh, for this country, but as people with families, how do you feel about your dad becoming president and how that would change your life? We're nervous about it. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things. We we uh, our lives are pretty good as they are, and this is one of those things where we recognize it's good for the country for my dad to run, but not necessarily as good for us. And so we uh, we're going to try and keep our lives as normal as uh, as consistent as they can possibly be over the next uh, few years. Well, obviously, uh, I believe you wanted him to run in the last campaign. Were you guys reluctant about him running this time? We knew what we were getting into this time, and so we we're definitely more hesitant. I was really reluctant. I didn't want him to do it. I tried to convince him not to. I think there are a few of few of us that tried that. I know you didn't, but uh, I just felt like, you know, for, for us as a family, this isn't the best thing, but as Josh said, for the country, we think it's the right thing. Cody, as you can probably tell, I really love the limelight, so I was, uh, <laughs> I was really... <laughs> Uh, well, um, listen, it was, uh, it was a real pleasure. I know this all happened because I, I really, literally bumped into I was in security line waiting to get on a plane, bumped into you, Josh. We started talking, and it just seemed like, all right, let's get to know this family a little better. So thanks very much for all of you being here. Give our best to your family, and, uh, you know, best of luck in the next couple of months. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very here. much. Governor Mitt Romney, Scott. Seeking a friend for the end of the world. Sit around. Last season, all for better or worse, our favorite couple was going strong. I love you. Love you back. Till Angela discovered what was going down. Let's take Boom. Now everything's a hot mess. You need to stop. Oh. Keisha's pushing up on Marcus. Leslie's in the middle. Oh, yeah. Rich is acting shady. Let's just go. And Joe's in love. Oh. Well, Angela has her own secrets. Hey, okay. Now that they're all caught up. Ready for some more? Tyler Perry, for better or worse. Brand new back to back episodes start Friday, July 13th after Brand New House of Pain. Only on CBS. Very funny. <laughs> is the creator and star of the popular Adult Swim series, Children's Hospital. He's also co-starring in the new movie, Seeing a Friend for the End of the World. Please welcome Rob Corddry. couldn't get the rest of the Cordry boys. <laughs> yeah. I got a ton of rum in you. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Um, I know that you have, what is it, your family, you have, is this what, you have two children? I have uh, two girls. Two yeah. girls. Okay. Six and three. Yeah. How's that going? How are they okay. dating? They're... <laughs> <laughs> it's great. They're great. It's a good age. My six-year-old is, uh, you know, really smart, and she's like, She's like maybe too smart, you know, one of those. She's like a worrier. Yeah. Uh, and my youngest one, my three year old, um, might be. Can you say that? No. No. Okay. You can't. No, you can't. I don't mean medically. I'm not saying like <laughs> met. I mean like. <laughs> she will. This is your daughter you're talking about. Pretty <laughs> quick, this way. She will be the first one to try drugs. <laughs> in the family. She's got to say, her name is uh, her name is Marlo mm -hmm. because we nailed it. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, but she never goes by Marlo. Like she's always she has a, a, a whole cast of characters. Uh, she's either um, if anyone were watching at the time Rapunzel or uh, Pocahontas mm -hmm. or Amy. A teenager named Amy. Uh, or just making up these names and characters. Oh yeah, yeah. These are these, these are words. Sometimes yeah. she just comes up with whole, you know, another language. But uh, she's uh, and, and then there's a uh, Sadie Venus. What? <laughs> uh, she came up with the name Sadie Venus. Yeah. Which yeah, it rhymes with penis. That was. 
You gave me a bat lines with penis look. No, I didn't. It rhymes. I just see. I'm sorry. I see that rhymes with penis looks all the time in people. I just. I, I, I put that. I put that on you, and I apologize. Yeah, rhymes with lady penis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so nice to talk about our children. <laughs> 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 Getting together and chatting about all oh, the kids. Uh, but the other character she has is um, she a little baby named a little baby boy named Eh. Uh -uh. And I'll it she'll remind me like uh, like and I'll forget like I'll play uh, the theme song to Pocahontas you know when I want to rock out. Sure. And uh. <laughs> And she'll, I forget, and then she she hears the song, and she goes straight out to lunch, man. Like, her eyes just, like, she loses, she goes into character. Uh-huh. And I'll say, oh, hey, Marlo, do you want, she goes, you mean Pocahontas. And <laughs> we're giving her away. <laughs> So Father's Day was Sunday. <laughs> I collected all the goods, you go, 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 and now I destroy it all. What's that about? <laughs> yeah. What's that about your your career, your work? You're you're very busy. I'm assuming you just uh, you just shot a movie with uh, director Michael Bay. Yeah. And, and and you play is this right a former bodybuilder? Well, the the part was just, yeah yeah of course. <laughs> <laughs> what former a bodybuilder. Uh, you had that look again. Uh, I. Yeah. Former. Uh, no, it was written for that, but then when they, they uh, when I got cast, they changed it to a, a former amateur wrestler. You know, like the yeah, the wiry, guys, like, yeah, 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 wiry, yeah, looks good with a shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and it was yeah, so it's totally different. What, what's it like working with Michael Bay? I don't believe I've met that guy. Uh, yeah, a lot of people. You know, he's got a reputation for being a hard ass and kind of tough and. And he, I saw him make three people cry in one hour, but uh, I, I respond to his sort of, he's very honest, you know? Uh, like, like, I hate it when directors will come up to me after a take and say something like, uh, so uh, how, um, how, how did you think that went? You know? I'm like, uh, I don't know how to change my performance tonight. Right, right. And so he, but he goes, yeah, Rob, you, uh, you improv the joke and it tanked, you got distracted, and then you messed up my line. So uh, go back and do it again. <laughs> I was like, thank you. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> now I get it, and I know what to do. Uh, so, yeah, I enjoyed myself. All right, well, we have a... Uh, I want to make sure we get to this film. You're uh, speaking of friends for the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you were in this movie, uh, and I'm told that you're in this movie for a grand total of... How many minutes do you think? I've been on this stage longer than I'm in the movie. Uh, I probably like uh, uh, I'm in the trailer for almost as long as I'm in the movie. Okay. Like two minutes. I'm good for two minute chunks. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you re that's where you do your best work. That's where I really shine. Okay. Uh, we we have a clip here from Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Yes. Uh, anything you can tell us about this? Uh, this is like a kind of a road movie at the end of the world. It's going to end in two weeks. Right. And uh, an asteroids coming. Asteroids. Steve Carell and Keira Knightley uh, take a road trip, and we are sort of the first stop. Uh, me and, and Connie Britton, who plays my wife, Patton Oswalt is already uh, also in the scene, and uh, and we are just sort of the first, like one example of how people react, and it's sort of hedonistically. All right, let's take a look at this clip from Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Uh, enjoy. Karen, I'm off the Don't do not. You know what? Please, Warren. Can we just have a few sober moments tonight? This is the Last Supper, Diane. You think Jesus was sober for his Last Supper? Think he turned water into lemonade? Dodge, a little help, please. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Dodge is my friend. My friend. Look at this, my friend. This is a Don Ramon cigar. This is the hardest cigar in the world. Can you chop those a little louder, please? This is the hardest cigar in the world to buy. And tonight, I'm going to share one of my last 13 with you. Seeing a friend for the end of the world opens Friday, and Children's Hospital Hilarious Show returns August 9th. That's right. All right, thank you for being here, sir. Rod Corddry, we'll be right back. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Conan O'Brien, and I'd like to get serious for a moment. Thanks. That felt good. Tony, weeknights at 11, only on TVS. Very fun. My next guest, a remotely platinum selling band, they're here tonight to perform a special acoustic version of the song Unity from their latest album, Amaryllis. Please welcome Shine Down. It's a map in my mind that sends me on my way. They say it's never too late to stop being afraid. There's no one else here, so why should I wait? And in the blink of an eye, the past begins to fade. So have you ever been caught in a sea of despair? I'm not there. So put your hands in the air if you hear me out there. I've been looking for you day and night. Shine a light in the dark, let me see where you are. Cause I'm not gonna leave you behind. Yes, I told you that you're not alone. And I showed you this is where you belong. Put your hands in the air. Do it again, and it brings me back to you. So have you ever been caught in the sea of your bed? And your moment of truth is the day that you say, I'm not there. So put your hands in the air if you hear me out there. I've been looking for you day and night. Shine a light in the dark.
you like when you want to dance? So I'm going to dance. Oh, okay. Ooh, it's a few more. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. You know, you're so excited to work out a lot. I work out just enough to touch your tires.